we're awaiting the start of the Act in Aguadulce Unified School District Board of Trustees meeting for May 13th. We're waiting for them to come out of closed session. We're meeting at 7.42 p.m. Mr. Fox, will you leave us in the flag salute? Uh, sure. Put on the uh, face of the flag. Hats off, right hand over your heart. And uh, let's begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Johnsburg, will you uh, read this ability statement, please? If you insist on that, yes, sir. Um, communicate clearly and concisely with respect for the time of others. Listen objectively, uh, carefully considering the opinions of others. Understand the counterproductive uh, effects of disruptive, demeaning, and intimidating behaviors. Understand and respect district policies and procedures. Maintain a respect for the rich history of the district and efforts of others who have served in the past. Thank you, Mr. Watsburg. All right, we have public comments, recognitions, and reports. So if anyone would like to speak to the board for any agenda and agenda or non agendized <laughs> items to the superintendent prior to the meeting, no more than three minutes are allotted for any one speaker and no more than 20 on the same subject. This portion of the agenda is for comments, recognitions, and reports. To the board, it is not intended to be a question and answer period. Mr. King, do we have any public comments this evening? I think we have one, and then one comment, and uh, there's Tracy at this time. Okay, can we unmute this? Good evening, can you hear me? We can hear you, thank you. So a few things. So a few things. I would like to address Teacher Appreciation Week. Oh, hold on, Tracy. We we can't hear you now. Okay. Hold on. I apologize, Mrs. Costa. Can you start again, please? Yes, please start the timer again, please. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? You can. So a few things. I would like to address Teacher Appreciation Week, a time to honor teachers. These individuals have been a constant in our students' lives, especially since the onset, the onset of distance learning, who interface with students, educating our kids, keeping them safe, mentoring, coaching, wanting to work in our little district, wearing many hats. They are the glue that holds this district together. Our teachers need to be embraced and supported, not micromanaged. The only thing some of these teachers are guilty of is staying at work after hours for the benefit of our students. I've spoken with several teachers, each with an account of board members looking into complaints about them, and even some community members, maybe even me. Some of you, it seems, do not like the way board meetings are interpreted in articles. I say that's too bad. I'm still here. I've done nothing wrong, just as these teachers have done nothing wrong. And you may not be aware that 90% of the time, students, teachers, and schools are on the front page of the paper, as the positive in our schools is constantly highlighted. Administrative staff and the board should be focused into looking into increasing our ADA by maybe petitioning the state citing the current funding model isn't working. We need it increased in order for it to be equitable for all students. Our kids aren't receiving the same benefits as our neighboring towns. Staff should maybe look into the new charter school opening in Aguadulce next fall, very close to ILEAD. And they are opening, I've spoken with them. How is that going to affect Metal Arcs enrollment? Is it even a concern? And why didn't anyone look into a press release that we received from the AV Fairgrounds AV High School District recognition of high school seniors in the Antelope Valley with a 4.0 or higher? And guess who's not on the list? Vasquez. And when we inquired as to why, they stated our district chose not to participate. Vasquez is part of the Antelope Valley. 
And if you are addressing some of these things I've mentioned, we wouldn't know because you don't talk about it. The only thing we consistently hear is that additional cuts are looming later this summer. And let me say this. Board members should not have personal agendas or ill feelings towards staff, teachers, or parents. You cannot govern effectively if this is the case. Intimidating behaviors are not allowed in your bylaws or in your civility statement. It seems if someone isn't happy, even a non-stakeholder, they can go to a board member who may be a friend with unfounded complaints that are nonsense, and some of you will take it upon yourselves to overstep and look into it. And yet many of us parents made individual complaints the correct way, making appointments at the district office to discuss concerns about an administrator at High Desert, and nothing was done for a year and a half. This is the culture of this board and district. And let me be clear, my patience is wearing thin. That is all. Thank you. Okay, Mr. King, do we have any reports or recognition? We do not. Okay, do we have our out of representation? Do we have a list of six others this evening? The report? Okay. Thank you. How about uh, CSEA? Do we have Cesar Ortiz? No, no. The report this evening? Okay. And then how about our student representative? Do we have him? Perbation? Good evening, Tom. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone is well. I don't have a few things to report, although a lot of major things have happened since the last talk. First thing I want to thank is uh, the first for people I want to thank are the teachers. Obviously, teachers appreciation thank you. They're doing a great job. I'm, as, a, as a senior, I think they're doing great. Next thing is I'm so grateful we're back on campus four days a week. That is something special. I didn't think it was going to happen, and it, it couldn't make me happier. Third thing I want to say is... In regards to sports, I'm glad that almost, I'm pretty sure almost every single sport is back and going. So I want to thank everyone for making that happen. I want to give special recognition to Ivy Calvin and Melina Mazone for making track work with very little supplies and funding. So bravo to both of them to make our, our, uh, our, our home turf an actual track. That was amazing. Competable, if you will. So that's all I have to say. Thank you all again. And have a great night. Thank you. Okay, so we have Superintendent the Goldstone Report, Mr. King. Thank you. I appreciate that. I do have uh, two things to share this evening. First thing is, um, I'd like to start with our update on what's happening with the coronavirus, its impact on the guidelines, and where we're at. So the current case rate is extremely low. Um, we are at blue to 1.4 when you look at that moderate orange level. I believe we're 1.4 in the daily new cases per 100,000. And on the positive test rate, uh, we're under 1%. So these are both good signs. We have to have both criteria to hit the yellow, uh, but we are on the way um, not to um, overlook those that are still battling. And I it just um, in our call this morning, it was noted that uh, we just hit the 24,000 mark for a number of deaths in LA County. So I just, I wanted to mention that just because I think people have really uh, had to battle that and their families that are impacted. Uh, my heart just goes out to anybody that's had to deal with that and the impact of that. So there is authorization to now have vaccinations for 12 to 17 year olds. So that will be, there'll be more information coming out on that, but that, that is something that will be the next week closer to the county and the state. It is very likely that the mask wearing will stay in place even in the fall. Um, that's, that will be one of the last things to come off the list of um, requirements. Uh, so that, that's likely to stay in place. It's likely that the three foot distancing will remain in place in the fall. Uh, transportation protocols is one thing that could loosen up, uh, but they haven't quite um, gotten the guidelines together for transportation for the fall, and so that's something that's still in discussion. Um, outside groups and visitors do not come onto campus still while students are in session. Um, 
But for example, if you had a break over your summer, you could have outside groups or visitors come onto campus as long as students were not in session. Um, letting outside organizations use your facilities. For example, if somebody wanted to use a baseball field on a Sunday, um, that would be okay. They would just need to go through the normal facilities use request uh, process with, with our business services department to get that approved and pay any associated fees and uh, abide by our um, regulations and standards. Um, let's see. It's very important, even if you've been vaccinated, that we continue to wear our masks just as good modeling for our students. It was something else that was uh, pointed out. Um, nothing significant changed when we, when we go from the orange tier to the yellow tier in terms of education. Um, there was the lifting of the restriction for staff to have access to no more than three stable groups. The groups still need to remain stable. But what that means, for example, is if you have an itinerant providing services to students, they can go into several different classrooms. They're not limited to only three. So that's, that's um, I think, good news for us. The, the only major outbreaks that they pointed out are outbreaks have all been through athletics. So they, they just, you know, are really encouraging um, schools to really think about, you know, how, that they're um, adhering to the guidelines in regard to athletics. Um, so that, that was something that came up in the discussion. And lastly, I want to talk about um, the four days per week that uh, Kemp Fairbanks pointed out. So right here, you'll see the hybrid schedules. The schedules have not changed. There's no change to the schedules. And I think that's important to know. And I um, really want to thank our teachers um, for stepping up and saying, look, with the, with the guidelines changing from six feet to three feet, um, I'm willing to take in students that are in my cohort A on Monday, Tuesday, for example, and my cohort B on Thursday, Friday, and combine those two cohorts so that my students can get in-person instruction if they so desire for four days. Or they can stay on their Thursday, Friday schedule or their Monday, Tuesday schedule. It's really the flexibility is there for the, the student. So um, I appreciate that very much. Uh, K-4 has done that since they opened, so they were never on a two-day schedule. They were always a four-day because they realized that early on. And after we'd signed the MOU for the six-foot distancing, right after that, of course, there was a change. And then it said, oh, you can go down to three feet now. And um, our teachers in the, the elementary school, there was a couple of classrooms where it impacted them and they needed to go a little bit less than six feet. And so they were willing to do that. And so more recently, uh, grades seven through 12 uh, agreed to do the same. And, and then even more recently, as of today, grades five and six um, have also uh, agreed to do the same. And that will begin on Monday. I believe Mr. Cubella put out that, that announcement today to his staff and to his community. Uh, along the same lines, again, I just wanted to thank um, our certificated and our classified staff. Last week, we celebrated um, certificated uh, appreciation day for our teachers, and it's really an appreciation week. Um, there was lots of um, food available and lots of gift giving and um, a week doesn't really uh, do it. We appreciate everything that our teachers do, especially this year. Um, I've talked to many, many of you. I know the, um, the time and effort and commitment that you put into your classrooms, and I just can't thank you enough. It's, it's uh, very much appreciated. The classified staff, we um, officially is next week, classified appreciation week. Uh, we started celebrating this week, and um, and again, what they've had to do during this time of distance learning in terms of keeping, keeping the classrooms clean, um, the food service has been absolutely incredible in everything they've done. Um, cold weather, hot weather, wind, you know, out there under the canopy serving families um, hundreds of meals a day. And uh, just, just unbelievable. 
Um, our clerical staff has been able to provide the support needed to school sites, business office here, transportation. Uh, just everybody's really, really pulled together, and I, I credit our staff for all of that. Um, next, I'd like to talk a little bit about the um, uh, actually, we can pass on the facilities, nothing new on the facilities at this point, but I do want to talk about our student advisory councils. Recently, I met with all three groups, and so the picture you see in front of you here is your representatives at Meadow Arc Elementary School. Uh, Josephine but Butlett uh, from Ms. Shoes Classroom, Kylie Finn uh, from Ms. Trillet and Ms. Huff's class, Amber Moore from the same third grade classroom, Raul Pacheco Vera uh, in second grade with Ms. Cox, and Edward Venegas Patino in fourth grade with Ms. Scheide. Um, these students are just incredible. Those are the ideas that they came up, came up with. You can see on the charts here, um, they, they asked for uh, any number of things. Can you go back one slide? I just want to emphasize that these were things that, um, that our elementary school students said, um, here's things that we like about our school, which you see on the left and the middle chart. And then you see on the right there, one of the charts they came with for our future school. Um, and, and so what they, one of the things they asked about was an art program, you can see there. Um, but they, the students said, like, like the music program, like something that's somewhat similar to art. So I just think uh, you really should be proud of our students. I know you are, but, but I, 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 mean, I wish we had some video of this. It would be really just great. So we'll go to the next slide. Here's some ideas that we came up with at High Desert School. Uh, this is Brandon Vasquez, an 8th grader, Lena Fox, 7th grader, Caden Botten, 6th grader, Alexis Van Oren, 5th grader. And uh, here's, those are some of the thoughts that they have shared. Um, what we value at our school, things that we think that are going well, uh, what we need to work on, what would your dream school look like? These are the same questions that uh, Kim Shaw and Asan Mirza asked to the different stakeholder groups. And uh, we met with DLAP, we asked the same types of questions. All this information is being put together and will become part of the LCAP. So uh, we really appreciate the student input here. Lastly, let's show what the high school students said. Uh, you see Kemp Fairbanks here uh, and Myra Schneider. We also have Jocelyn Monroe and Samantha Brooks. Um, and I, I don't have their thoughts up here um, because these two represented them at the LCAP meeting. The other two students had classes and I didn't want to disrupt them. But all four of these students are just, again, uh, fabulously positive and thoughtful and uh, respectful as they share their thoughts and uh, really appreciate their, their contribution to uh, what we need to work on and what is going well. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about uh, career technical education. So we um, have a proposal for the board potentially on May 27th. We'd like to bring forward a contract. However, we're not going to bring it forward um, until we hear back from the teachers at the middle school. So we kind of moved through this progressively. First, uh, I think it was Hassan Mercer that, that knew an attachment to this program from the previous district. Uh, he had shared it with Kim Shaw, the two of them got in touch. The name of the program is Paxton Patterson. They got in touch with the uh, uh, the gentleman, I think his name was Judd, who, who did um, the presentation. I invited uh, board members to attend the presentation. Our board president attended with me. Um, Alexa Lett and Nicole Chine attended as well. Uh, it really looks like a solid program. There's 40 plus labs that they call them where students can receive training and exposure in a variety of areas. One of the things that Ms. Jensen and I saw was um, uh, a student learning how to do CPR on a dog. Um, it was not a live dog, but it was, you know, like, just like you see uh, the, the cadavers with the people, but, uh, you know, it was a dog. Plastic rubber dog. Yeah, plastic rubber dog. And so, um, anyhow, it, it's, it's really a great program. I'm really uh, a proponent of it. I can't wait to see what our teachers say. Um, the students are really engaged in authentic problem-based learning experience to discover their interest interest and aptitude. I thought it was uh, well done in the video, too. 
Um, one time funding would be used to pay for this program. I can share more again on the 27th. Um, I really want to give kudos and a shout out to Alexa Lepp and Nicole Chun. Um, with everything else they got in their place, they're willing to get trained up and kind of be a trainer, trainer's resource for our own staff, which I think would be um, uh, great because you always have buying and know your own people. It's a little bit more beneficial sometimes than having somebody coming from outside. Um, on a different note, but along the same lines of adding programming to our schools where we see gaps, is the science teachers at Vasquez High School have asked us to look into Project Lead the Way, which would be an expansion of our high school science program. And again, we can use the same one-time funding resources to uh, help fund this program once we make a good decision. So thank you uh, for that piece. And uh, the science teachers, thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, graduation status, uh, we're still on track. Uh, it's been publicized that the graduation for high school uh, class of 21 will be on Thursday, June 10th. Class of 20 will be on Friday, June 11th. And uh, the uh, eighth grade promotion will uh, take place. I will get you the dates, but um, the promotion will go under the same guidelines. Uh, same directions, same criteria as the high school as far as all the health protocols. So the principals are working together collaboratively just to make sure that we're all doing the, uh, the same kinds of things. Um, when I talk about these one-time funding sources, one of them is extended learning opportunities. And we kind of laugh about it because it's another uh, acronym in education, ELO which to anybody in my generation, I mean, electric light orchestra, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, the yellow funding for this district means approximately $980,000. Um, so that's, that's quite a bit of money for the district um, to help us with um, personnel costs, help us with summer school, help us with these programs that I'm talking about. And um, again, it's not ongoing funding, but it is very helpful for programmatic uh, enhancements. Speaking of programmatic enhancements, uh, the next thing I'd like to touch on is the wellness centers. So as you may recall in um, reading and approving our learning continuity plan, which we had to submit to the county and the state, in there we described our wellness centers, which we had not had a place, but um, our counseling staff, along with um, uh, Kim Shaw, had put this idea together on paper and it's finally coming to fruition. So if the uh, board, if any of you'd like to come visit with me, I'd be happy to set that up if you'd like to visit the Wellness Center. It's currently, at, we only have one at this time that's kind of staged at the high school. It's currently in the music room. Um, I want to be really clear that does not mean we're replacing our music program with the Wellness Center. So we're still looking at space at the high school. It's, it's, it's just at this time, that's where it's set up so um, so that we can, we can take a look at that if you'd like to. Um, we are speaking of the music program. We're looking at that as well. Um, and we're talking with a couple of people who might be able to help out with the high school music program. Um, it's in the budget for both music and drama. So when Mrs. Siri left the district, I made sure that we had an allocation in the budget for both of those programs to continue. We don't want to lose you know, our arts programs, because programs should not be tied to people, they should be tied to the district. So we will um, continue to promote and fund those programs. Um, one thing I would suggest that the, if the board would like it is that in the fall, um, perhaps at a meeting you'd like some information regarding the wellness centers, you know, what is that tied to? When we talk about a wellness center, well, it goes back to the social emotional learning standards that are outlined in the uh, state standards and federal standards. So we want our students to be able to self-regulate. We want to help them to manage anger, anxiety, depression, the things that lead to some of the unfortunate circumstances that are read about in the newspaper. So a wellness center is one of the ways to be proactive on those sorts of things and to prevent them from happening down the road and to be there as a support for our students. But that's just kind of food for thought for the board um, in terms of having a more in-depth look at that. And lastly, 
we do have a video this evening. It's the third and last video of our uh, high school, celebrating our high school seniors. And so we're happy to share that with you this evening. I lost internet connection, so I'm waiting to be let back in after a few minutes here. The countless kids you sent out there and had the same success story, and you don't even know it. That's our brand, Nicole. Good for you. And then finally, yesterday, just out of pure, I finally went to the eye doctor at 61 years of age. Um, I didn't see anything wrong with these seven dollar glasses I had, but I went in and I was towed around by another graduate. I think you know him, uh, Coach Cody Barnes. Yeah, he is doing ophthalmology technician work while he's waiting to go to uh, cardiology school. Fine young man, but I, I look around this community and I'm constantly getting examples. Not just the kids that are in school, but as they turn into adults, they're just excellent. So um, that is that. That's all I have. Staff, I can't tell you the boys that are bouncing out there in the world right now. You're maintaining a focus on education. We're holding our brand. I don't care what it is. We're holding our brand. We're doing it well. Uh, we'll get through this this charter thing. The Kool Aid's almost gone. We'll get through this charter thing. We got some money to work through. Uh, but you guys are all going and doing your job, so thank you. Mr. Fox. Thanks. Um, I'd like to, uh, it was wonderful hearing from Mr. Kemp tonight and seeing the video. Um, all the kids back at school. Um, 
I'll miss hearing from the students, and I'll, I'll miss the videos, which brings me to the next part of what I'm going to say tonight. Um, many of you know, um, have worked with or volunteered with, with my wife, Nancy. You know she's very intelligent and a very hard worker. Uh, when we married and moved here, she was a physical therapist down in Santa Clarita and ran a, a medical portion of a medical group. But as we started our family here and our children became school aged, uh, we would we were determined that they would attend schools here in their home community. And uh, that was difficult with both of us commuting. So we made this family decision that she forego her career, <clears throat> dedicate herself to raising our kids and actively participate in their education. Uh, she volunteered in classrooms like so many of you do, served as the ASMO secretary for a couple of years like so many of you do, and ultimately went to work for the school district as part-time like many, many parents do. Uh, and that was 11 years ago. Uh, I'm grateful for the choice she made. Um, more than anyone, she's responsible for the people that our kids have become. But at the moment I joined the board seven years ago, um, Nancy became precluded from materially changing her role with the district. It's state law. In 11 years, that's how long she's worked for the district in the same capacity, doing the same kinds of tasks is a long time. So tonight, I announce another, much more minor family decision that I'll resign from the board, effective tomorrow, so that my wife... Ironically, it's the early retirement program that I voted against that I will anticipate. This is not anybody else anticipating, but that I will anticipate will result in a potential shuffling of roles for employees because some of the positions we're, we're going to refill. And of course, those will get posted and employees with, from within the district are, are not only welcome, but encouraged to apply. And uh, frankly, that's a side benefit of the early retirement program. Because uh, it means that, you know, should this occur, current employees have an opportunity to apply for postings that, that, um, that might occur, you know, and, and people get a chance to grow. And people growing, doing different things is, is always wonderful. So, but if I continue to sit here, my wife is locked out of applying to any potential new openings for roles in the district that might be refilled or at any roles in the district at all. So for our family, we're talking about the job my wife goes to every day versus the volunteer activity I perform with you all every two weeks. And when you put it that way, it kind of becomes a no-brainer as far as a, a family decision. Uh, I'm honored to have served the students, families, and staff of this district for seven years. I'm proud of my service and that of the board members I've served with, past and present. I take uh, this last opportunity to speak to the public um, to express to you that a board that largely votes together and largely approves the recommendation of staff is actually a sign of a healthy, functioning board that is united in goals and purpose. That's a good thing. It's good for students. It's good for families. It's good for staff. We definitely express ourselves very differently. But when push comes to shove and it's time to vote, if you examine the voting records, we arrive at the same conclusions and vote quite similarly. Again, this is a sign of unity of purpose and a healthy functioning governing board. I thank you all for the opportunity to serve with you. And I thank students and parents for the opportunity to have served for you. I suspect, I hope that there are a few community members who may be interested in taking my seat. I encourage you to, to do so. It's a, it's a very rewarding endeavor. Thank you all very, very much. I will, I will miss, uh, I'll miss the kids.
Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, hope everybody out there is uh, healthy and doing well. Uh, briefly, I'll touch on uh, Tracy Carlson's comments. Um, I, I appreciate your spotlighting uh, students and teachers throughout our district, um, whether it's athletics or academics, all of the above. I think uh, it's great to put that out there for the public to see, and everybody should be uh, acknowledged at some point in time, not just a few star uh, athletes here and there, which I know you do a good job uh, covering everybody, so thank you for that. Uh, Kim Fairbanks, thanks for your work. Good to hear your voice again. It's been a, been a few weeks. Um, thank you to the teachers that uh, all volunteered to come back to open up four days a week. Um, I know it made a big difference in a lot of students' lives. Um, I think it's a good thing. I think it's time we get our kids back into class more regularly and uh, get the, the, the ball rolling as it is. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I'll echo um, Mr. Falls uh sentiments about Nick Colsa. Sato, you are, are an all-star and uh, you, you are great at your job and uh, everybody here in this building appreciates you um, dearly. Um, you know, last week was kind of a weird week with a lot of uh, conversation a lot, of, a lot of hearsay, a lot of this, that, and the next thing going back and forth. That surprisingly, I got kind of wrapped up into on Friday night. And um, I think that, or I would like people to start realizing before they start playing the game of telephone, that this person, that person, the next person, to make sure that the facts are the facts and that what you're saying is truth. Because I think sometimes uh, one person says something and then the next person says something else. And it does the, the truth by the time it gets into the conversation isn't really what the truth is. So I would caution the public and the people in this town that, uh, you know, let's use a little discretion. Let, let things play out before you start passing judgments. Um, I appreciate you guys paying attention and, and, and wanting to do better, but sometimes it, it doesn't always work out that way. At any rate, um, another thing I would like to touch on is uh, if you have questions or you have a comment, everybody has an opportunity to speak here. So you can send in your uh, submittal. It'll be read. You'll have the opportunity to read it yourself. Don't be scared. Nobody here is got some ulterior motive to sabotage you or your student here on down the road. Say what you have to say. Let us hear it. Let's work through the issues that you may or may not have. And let's make our environment better. This cliquish mentality that we have within this district, it's just out of control. We need to come together as a community. We need to make all of our schools the best they possibly can be. And everybody should have a voice in it. But if you don't speak up, and you just choose to sit in the background and be on a social media platform or a text platform and it never comes forward to the public, your voice is never going to be heard. So I highly suggest that everybody get involved and please submit your comments. Come on here and talk. Let's get conversation going. Let's find a common ground for everybody. With that being said, I appreciate uh, all of our teachers. Um, I'm happy to see our students back to school and um, that's all I have for tonight. So I want to I want to say what a great uh, pleasure it is to hear that see our students getting back onto the campus four days a week at their opportunity. I was encouraged that the fifth and sixth graders are going to have that same opportunity down by desert. I know that it's going to be uplifting for our students. They have worked hard. They've been very patient, and now they were able to get back to their campus in a measured way as we continue to move forward because it's a team effort to get this COVID thing behind us. As we finish out the last quarter of the year, we're looking up for graduation for our seniors and our past seniors, that the students can continue to grow. I know that that's not possible without a lot of hard work from the classified staff at each one of our campuses and the teachers willing to sacrifice time and effort because teachers don't, at the end of the day, don't close up shop at 4.35 o'clock if they're doing extracurricular activities at 6 or 7. They go home and the planning continues on and the interactions and, that, and 
planning for the next day's event. They can plan out the week, but there's always something that comes up. And so I want to send it my former colleagues and, and I know what it's like to be a teacher. And I really am very appreciative of your hard work and your dedication committed to your students to give them every opportunity. And clearly the parents, thank you for your patience. It's been frustrating for you, for sure. It's been a challenge for your students and everybody working together in that. And that's one thing I've always thought about the uniqueness of our small community and our small school. When I came here, I stayed 18 years. I never had a desire to go anywhere else because it, it was so attractive to be in a small community where the students come first and everybody's working hard to make sure the students have opportunity, even with our limited resources and for many years, our limited facilities. And as we continue to grow and meet those needs and expanding with new things with CTE, and other electives to give these all of our students an opportunity to have that high school experience that they will remember and go back to and come back 10, 15, 20 years and have a facility they can come to and visit. The, it's great to, it's always good to hear Kemp talk. I'm glad because I'm looking forward to when he, uh, that uh, trainer is yelling at him and he's going, oh my gosh, what did I do when he's back at West Point? So. That's going to be something that I'll even drive back there to watch him run around there. Because it remind me of Superintendent King's my drill sergeant days when uh, someone's in your face all the time. So I'm appreciative of your leadership on campus, Kemp, and how you're doing it. I'm really excited about the athletic program. I drove by the when I drive by seeing the baseball team playing, and I go by the freeway, and I can look out and see the softball girls out there working. Soccer's having a competition. Football's doing spring training. It's just really encouraging and uplifting because I know that athletics has that direct link to academic success. Our students need that resource and now they've been cooped up in their homes and I'm really glad that as the protocols relax that we've got our outdoor sports and I'm hopeful that sooner than rather than later that we can have our indoor sports coming up so they can prepare for fall. Because we've got some really quality athletes at the middle school and I noticed on one of the charts that one of the concerns was is athletics at the middle school. We worked hard to get it there. Now we've got to reestablish that. So the term for me for athletic is what can the people in charge do to rebuild it and make it better for fall? Use these last quarter of the school year to start setting the groundwork and the seed for how we can come back in the fall and present our winter sports and our fall sports to have uh, outstanding competition and conditioning. And uh, it can't go without being said, Nicole, that uh, extended really uh, a unique sense of admiration and appreciation for you to do your job as a counselor at the high school. It touches personally for me because my counselor at my high school at Hart High stimulated me unbeknownst to her for me to go ahead and get my master's degree because she did not have the attention to detail that we're your student that you're providing for your students in your chart. But the counselor's role is unique and it's special and, and you fill that role and I appreciate that. I know your students do and thank you again for your hard work. And in closing, Mike, I thank you for your many years of service for the school board. Uh, it's been hard. You brought a sense of fiscal responsibility in the discussions that me not being a math person explaining things and I appreciate that. Uh, it's been a long time, a number of years, and so thank you very much for your service. With that, I'll turn it over to Madam President. Well, Mike, I want to also thank you. Um, you have a lot of knowledge and your patient, and you you share some great insight. And uh, your years of service has been just uh, just amazing. It's a hard job. It's a volunteer job that isn't easy, and a lot lot a lot of criticism and other things come with the job that you were are volunteering for. So. Thank you so much for all you've done, and I, I'm going to miss you a lot. I'm going to really miss you being part of this board. Um, also, I'd like to thank um, our, our classified and teachers as we um, we get to celebrate them over the last uh, couple of weeks. First of all, I want to be clear that um, as an education as an educator, I truly do appreciate all teachers and all classified staff. If you um, you cannot work at a school, and a school cannot run without your classified staff. And t students um, cannot learn at high levels without a great teaching staff. Um, so I just want to uh, make sure that it's clear that um, when we have comments made, that I, I 
do recognize everything teachers do and how much hard work, especially through this pandemic. If you think planning a lesson on a daily basis and just showing up happens, it doesn't just happen. And doing it virtually is probably three, four times longer than it would take for a regular day. So teachers, I want you to know that I know how much hard work and dedication you give to this school district and your students every single day. And I, I truly appreciate all you do. And, the, and, it's, a, and it's a rough job. And so I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, not just as a community member, board member, but just also as a, as a educator, how much I know that you're putting into this. So I appreciate you. Um, I did get to go to the, um, the visit last week and we did see a dog getting CPR, but the amount of engagement that was going on was fantastic. And I am so excited to see where, um, we can take this district and, and some great things that are, are coming in. So I'm excited for our students as well. And I appreciate our teachers that are willing to step up and take that extra training and, and be kind of a teacher of teachers. So I appreciate that. Um, I will be coming to the high school. I'm excited. I really liked that video of seeing the gym and how beautiful it looked and on the wellness center. So high school, I do want to come by and, and visit. And yes, you're right. A counseling job is not easy. And when we talk about branding our, our school district and we talk about, you know, ADA and money and things like that. Yeah, those are hard, hard things. But when we talk about students like Kemp, who's leaving this district and going on to do some great and fabulous things. Yeah, family has a heart, is a good part of that too, but so is the education that he got from this district. When we talk about former student Cody Barnes, who's working for a, an eye doctor, but he's leaving next month to go to medical school to become a doctor and was accepted and taking his sweet little new family off to be a doctor. Yeah, that's part of branding our school district. So, um, you know, I think we need to start telling our story because we are not a district of doom and gloom. We are a district that has done some great and fabulous things with a small amount of money and a little group of people. And so um, that really hurts my heart when I hear, hear things being said that are, when everybody's giving their blood, sweat, and tears and, and, and doing such a fabulous job. So we do have a good story. We need to start telling our story. And when we have things that are in place like our gold standard that can show everybody what we can do and where we're going and have direction. That's, that's an important thing to do. I love the student input. I would um, wish we could have these children come in person and share with us what they did in the meeting. I thought their stuff was, I was trying to read it. I would like to see what they had to say off their little posters. You know, pizza on Wednesdays is great. But, you know, when I hear things like an art program, um, those are really uh, great things to say. And, you know, when we talk about things like our little music program down at the at Metal Art, you know, that those are not found everywhere. And so we need to tell our story because you don't find those kind of programs anywhere. I work for a large district. We don't have these sweet little things happening all the time. And I don't have a district that I love that I work for, but they're completely different. And the things that we're giving our students here and the relationships, which is, by the way, the most important thing right now in education is relationships and having a counselor you can go to and going to a small little town and they know who you are, that's important to these students and something that I'm very proud of as a community member. Um, I'm excited about graduation. What a year we had last year. And I'm so excited for our students that they're going to be able to, to have that. Um, and as far as that goes, uh, the last thing I want to say tonight is that we are continuing with our superintendent search. We're going to be doing some more work in closed session next week. Um, That'll mean this board comes in three days, um, three weeks in a row. Um, very encouraging. I want to thank our community that gave some great input and that it was compiled and put together. And that's how, you know, how it was determined what kind of person we're looking for um, to um, lead our district come summer. So with that, um, I just want to once again say again, thank you everyone to all the work that you're putting into this fabulous district and I, I just appreciate you so much. Sure. This, you would like to go back around? Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to go around one more time. Sometimes um, I learn lessons the hard way and what I do, I like to share. Uh, guys, I want you to remember your license plate's under your car. You have to put that little tag on there because if you don't, you get pulled over, you probably got the tag at your house and then you you uh, you can't get it, and you got to go to court. You got to spend all your time. So don't let your tags inspire. But 
speaking of expiring tags, um, you, you all know that I build guitars out of junk, and sometimes I raffle them off, and sometimes innocent people are just very kind and give away their money freely to buy my junk to, to support our schools. And Mike has been one of those. He's <laughs> We love that guitar. Right? I made out a license. We love it. Yeah. Well, good. Wyoming. I got some for you. I got a Michigan license plate from 1976. It said it expires May 14. Uh oh, wow. my. Thank you. Oh, my cool. God. My, I'm going to take a chance on Mike, thank you. Yeah. Um, I will share with, with this about Mike. Uh, Mike is a rocket scientist. So when I say it doesn't take a rocket scientist, sometimes it does. I've known Mike to ask questions that I know he knows the answer to in his sleep, but he asks them so people can see the math being done. It gets really simple to sit up here. Just remember, 80% of what we do up here happens every year by this day, this budget, this, 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 this. Very seldom do you get the opportunity to make decisions, and especially in the charter stuff. We come back to asking questions about the finance, what does this look like here, here, and here, and can you make it? Mike had a way of doing that and not depersonalizing and, and just make it about money, but also to challenge people to say, hey, tell us your story. If you don't know, tell us so we can put the measure rules in place. And then we're talking about Kelly and do it, and we're talking about education. And then finally, the one thing that, um, that we were kind of lacking was, if you're a charter school, it's okay to go outside and throw a ball, I think, right, Tim? So Tim brought that in, and, and um, the team that you're seeing here tonight, what Chad had to say tonight was really, really critical, and, and I hope everybody listens. I really do. So, guys, uh, we're missing something without you, Mike. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Fox. Yeah. All right. Pleasure, sir. So I'll, I'll just quick... Uh, I was blindsided in the early days, so I didn't even know. But uh, yeah. I appreciate. Me too. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He knows everything. I appreciate your service <laughs> to the community. Um, I will say that uh, you make my mind, my brain hurt when you talk most of the time because I'm my intelligent level is just not there. So that being said, I do appreciate you, and I appreciate what you brought to the table. My for them being here, and I wish you nothing but the best luck in your endeavors. Thanks, Bob Ports. Oh, I just, you can't apply for that job next week. Mike. You're out. Meet our new superintendent. Yeah, really, because he wants to be the superintendent. <laughs> thank you very much. We really appreciate you. And if it's on, you know, on the agenda, I still might call you occasionally for some help if it's something I mean, that you're not breaking the process. Seven and a half years of school history. So, will you please? The first week you're not here, call in and be right no. up. <laughs> <laughs> it's your guys' time. We're going to find you. We'll call We them. appreciate you. All right, guys, let's get back to work. Let's do the consent agenda. Point A, approval of, uh, I mean, A, approval of the consent agenda items. It's recommended that Board of Trustees approve consent calendar items 8A through 8E as submitted. Do I have a motion? Tim moves. I'll second it. I don't have many more of those. Yeah. <laughs> I, want, I want to pull the consent or, or the, um, the warrant register, please, for a um, general question and explanation. Okay. That is for C, the warrant register. Okay. Mr. 8C, excuse me. Where did I get four from? I have no idea. Where that we C, Mike's it? gone, and I don't even know the difference between a four and an eight. 8A, the warrant, 8, 8C, oh my gosh. All right, we're going to pull that when we get to that. And Mr. King, is there anything else you'd like to discuss on the consent agenda? So as 8, uh, uh, ABB, we the other one? Yes. Okay. So, um, yes, I just want to point out um, uh, E on the Boeing donation, coincidentally, Maybe not so ironically, it's okay. uh, it happens to be the same night as Mr. Fox's donation that he's designing from the board, but um, that seems kind of meant to be. So, Do you mind if I mention it? Because I kept that pretty low key, but... No, I was... I would, you want to share it? I will. It's, okay. you know, my 
my company uh, encourages us to participate in our community. And um, I've never made a big deal about this, but since I'm on my way out anyway, it just I just happen to have a, a, a very uh, generous employer that way. So for every hour I, I spend volunteering, um, they match it with uh, money to the district that I always just, um, it just gets donated and mentioned like this once a year, but I think the company deserves a little bit more than that for supporting their communities that their parent, that their uh, employees live in. And that's the reason I mentioned it. And this is, this is E? Yeah. This is E and I would say A. Would it be more accurate to say that Mike had to buy his way off the floor <laughs> to a donation of this employer tonight? That's the only way you can get off. <laughs> Well, through the years, Mike has you know, really supported the, uh, the tennis program with that contribution quite often. This year, I uh, spoke to Mr. Fox and uh, he graciously agreed that this could go towards the gym beautification project. And so it will become part of the uh, plaques being put up in the gym. On the interior and on the exterior, gym will go to the banners. So remember, if you have that one comment about not the time for the banners, maybe be long-term permanent just so we don't take away from future classes either everybody has to have their time but we thought it would be better to put a matter on the exterior of the building anyhow mm -hmm. but just know your donation the Boeing's donation is, is part of all that and also the uh the senior scholarship so thank you very much that, that's, that's my it was been my pleasure sir. Yes. Okay. so tonight we're going to now that we're moved in we're going to move in a b d and e so we'll call for the vote on A, B, D, and E, and then we'll go to the board next Before I vote, um, I'm not going to call out names, but I look on this a personnel action report and see numerous names that have helped not only my, my children, both of them, immensely, but all children in the district. That is... We're not there yet. I we're not there yet, Tim. Oh. We're not there yet. We're, okay. voting, we're moving in the... We're moving okay. in the um, dissent items a b d and e cool thank you and then after we vote on this then we'll put all scrap i box i <laughs> kelly jones and i that's a five zero four a b d and e now let's go to the warrant register do i need to move this in yeah move this in no, second i'll move it in and then mike will second okay let's start with um, comments, Mr. I think that um, we have a, a, an accounting system here, from what I can understand. When we go to, for example, on page two, Assurance Learning Academy Charter, I'm not picking that one out for any particular reason because they're all the same. But what I've noticed is, is there's a pass through of what the county uh, 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 or the property taxes that come through to, to, to do ADA for us. And it's listed monthly now when it used to be listed annually. Uh, and there is an indicator of what the oversight fee for that corresponding period was. Uh, my question was, when you look at the number uh, of what the pass-through is and compare it against the oversight fee as listed, it would tend to make you think that the oversight fee is 30%. I had a conversation with the superintendent and uh, the chief uh, financial officer, and uh, they gave me an explanation that helps me understand it. My comment will be that I, maybe you want to explain that uh, to the public. And also, I like this means of accounting because, as Mike had brought up in the past, sometimes there are hidden liabilities at the end, especially when schools fail. And I, I have to be very careful here. We've had some were, were uh, funds that uh, there were financial problems dumped right back into this district's lab. Um, but this method of accounting, I think, lets you tie up the money from month to month rather than having to send out letters when you realize that there's been nine months of a problem and then people aren't responsive and at the end. So I think Mike has always asked for this protection to be in place. Uh, if I'm not grasping this correctly, please correct me now. No, you're grasping it exactly correctly, and I appreciate your question, because it actually, when we have that discussion with Mr. Mirza, I'm going to call in just a moment, um, if you want to prepare him, 
um, that they clarified the breakdown of ADA because in my mind it was always you know nine thousand bucks a student, ninety five hundred dollars a student, ten thousand dollars a student. But when you started asking those questions about the breakdown of it, um, I'm going to let Mr. Mercer share it. I now understand it, but I think he can do a very eloquent job of breaking that down for the board and community. Hello, board members. So my video, I don't know if you can see me. Okay. So the way the, how we have the payments going out to uh, the charter, so specifically you, you stated assurance learning. So how we get our oversights. So the assurance learning is allocated their total LCFF based on their ADA, which is about 3300 is about $42 million, $42,381,000. And so what the district does is we budgeted, you know, a 1% a oversight fee. So that equates to about $423,000 that we would charge them Thank for uh, oversight fees for the whole year. And so what happens with uh, mm. the pass-through funds is that the county collects the property taxes for Acton and all the combined charters based on their ADA and sends it over to us. And what we do with that pass-through funds is we get it throughout the year. We get it monthly. So, so, so out of the pass-through funds, we get $1.5 million allocated to assurance. And that's divided into different apportionments that's given to us through the county on a monthly basis. So it's a different percentage. So, so August will get 6%, September 12, October 8. So what we do with that um, money is we, re we remove the portion of our oversight fee and then pass through the remaining to the charter school. And so that allows for us to, the limits the exposure for the district and it just allows a more traceable event, and we could ensure that we're not charging more than that 1% that we've allocated to do. So, uh, thank you. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but, but the end game on this is at the end of the year, um, that uh, allocation that the district is holding back uh, should not exceed 1%, and I think you referenced your and your goal for uh, to to target it more and inform the budget at point seven rather than the one yeah, percent. Yeah, so yeah. That now that, that conservative level would make it to the point where you're never jumping over because once you jump over and it starts looking like gravity, then uh, that little document that came out of the San Diego court told us made it very crystal clear uh, what that is. So I appreciate that explanation. Thank you. Well, thank you. Okay. May I ask a question? Yes. <laughs> you make no, no, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I noticed that right below that there, there, there's a business services COP final payment. What is that COP? Oh, well, that was the the three hundred thousand um, dollar. What is it, the electric? Uh, this kind of froze. Yeah, you froze. Say that again, please. Uh, so, what's what's the total dollar amount on that, Mr. Jorgens? Is it about three hundred thousand? Yeah, three sixty-five. Yeah. So that so that was done. That was an electro, the retrofit project from years okay. ago that we had payments on, and this would complete our payment on that. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions or comments? I'm okay, done. let's call for the vote on um, 8C, the warrant register. Paul Strapp, aye. Mike Fox, aye. Chad Wadsworth, aye. Tim Jorgensen, aye. Kelly Jensen, aye. So, warrant register 8C passes. Um, now we're on to um, 10A, the personnel action report. Can I get someone to move this in? That's 10 moves. Okay, hey, uh, Mr. King, do you have any? Yeah, just a quick comment before I take questions, comments from the board. This is the uh, addendum one, so I want to just notate the two changes to it. One is under employee name for resignation classified employee at the second table. Jessica Baker uh, is not uh, it's, it's DHS, not high desert. Other way around, sorry. 
high debt is not being addressed. Thank you. So, um, and then on the last, uh, you see at the bottom there of the same table, we should have, have one more name on there. That would be Samantha McConnell, uh, resigning as school secretary at High Desert. Um, other than that, let me just go back to the top here. Resignation of certificate employees. Uh, I want to acknowledge Yale Martin, long-time special education teacher at Metalot. Um, I saw her on this uh, Zoom call earlier. I'm not sure if she's still on. But Ms. Martin, I appreciate all you've done for our students with special needs. Um, you've been a committed teacher for many years. I wish you all the best moving on. And uh, congratulations on your decision and on your new journey. And, um, and, and then Ms. Trevelyan uh, has also been with the district for uh, a long time as well. Um, see her effective date of June 30th. Ms. Trevelyan, I wish you well. Thank you for all your years of service. Uh, appreciate everything that you brought to the district, and um, she's she's been a third grade teacher who taught many years with Miss Huff. So thank you, Mr. Gillian, and I wish you all the best. Wish you well. We have some common ties with Lake Arrowhead, and sometimes friends to uh, uh, former colleagues of mine or community members from there that I know. So uh, all the best. Hope you get to spend a lot of time in Lake Arrowhead, and uh, Miss Hickman. Uh, same thing for you. Congratulations on your decision. And uh, again, wishing you uh, all the best. And uh, thank you for your service. But there's many classified employees on here. Um, I'm just going to say their names because I feel they all need to be acknowledged. Jessica Baker, Pamela Koopman, uh, Julie Rouse and Payroll, Glenn uh, Linkson, our custodian, uh, bus driver Patricia Zamudio. Rachel Aguilar, longtime special education, special and instructional aide. We know her as our bilingual aide because of all the work she's done to help us out with ELAC and ELAC and reclassification and testing with students. Alma Carson, I'm always guaranteed to get a hug from Alma in the cafeteria at Metal Art. Um, she has a smile that never quits. And Samantha McConnell, our school secretary at High Desert. You've done a tremendous job in the four years I've uh, seen you serve our district in that capacity. To all of you, um, you work with special needs students. Julie, you uh, work with me every day in the business office over here in the central office. I just wish all of you the very, very best. Um, these are new journeys for each of you, and you've done a, you have a terrific career behind you, and you're on to a new and different. So thank you for your service. Appreciate you very much. Under uh, resignation of classified management, we'll see Paulette Buchner, Lucy Tone. Um, all that, we saw her walking out of here this evening, which is not unusual, just a short time ago when the board meeting was starting at 6.30. And food services for this year has been a daunting task. Um, so I want to really thank Paulette for everything she's done for this district in terms of food service. She has a heart in food service like I've never seen to ensure that um, whoever wants a meal gets a meal and she will do anything to make that happen. So uh, Paulette, I wish you all the best and thank you for your service. And uh, Lucy Tone, uh, Lucy works right across the way from me here in Kim Shaw's office. Um, I think she's one of our um, most senior classified employees, uh, confidential management employees. She's been with the district, if I'm not mistaken, is it, is it 30 years, you want 30 plus years. So uh, wishing her all the best on, on her journey moving forward. Um, she, she's been uh, quite an asset to the district in her work with uh, human resources and also helps manage the safe system for special education. So you can see for yourself the current positions that are up, and I don't need to read those. I just thank you, uh, Madam President, for the time to announce these people. Thank you so much. Ken, you have something? Okay, I'll carry on. There's a, uh, there are some people here um, that, that, Ms. Trevelyan, you're one of those people, when I walked in the door, you could see what I was like when I was seven or eight years old, and that 
there was just this immediate understanding that we won't have that type of false grab behavior in the classroom. Yale, you know what we've done for Tammy. Um, Ms. Koopman, um, yeah, you know what you've done for Tammy. Julie Rouse, if anyone knows, I, I, I love Julie Rouse because she buys the best cars. She buys the most informed cars because her car automatically knows how to get to the parking lot very first day and leave at the end of the day. She's one of the employees that is day in, day out, year after year. Julie, never any noise out of you. I don't know how we're going to get our payroll done. Now, there are other people on here. Rachel Aguilar, um, you know how I am by Title I kids. Um, our program would not be what it is without you. They're just Alma. Yeah, um, I do know that Alma would abandon her job so Tammy could play the piano every once in a while. I hope you didn't reprimand her for that. <laughs> Guys, uh, Lucy Tall, I wish I had a dollar for every superintendent you've outlived because I would be a very rich person. Uh, Paul, that you're the best. You're the best. Making sure that people... Uh, what I remember most about you, what I'll always remember most about you, is you were able to find more people that needed help and you protected their dignity. That That is the most important thing to me. Um, some of these uh, secretaries that are leaving, good luck to you. I'm, I'm glad Shiloh is where she is. Um, that's all I have, Mike. Thank you. Um for the employees uh, leaving, thank you for your service. For those retiring, I, I hope you enjoy the next phase of your life. Uh, many of those names um, help help raise our kids, so um, always appreciative to you. Thank you. Uh, short and sweet for me. Uh, thank you guys all for your service to the community and our district. I appreciate it. I wish I got to know uh, more of you for, on a personal level, but. Uh, I uh, just want to say thanks for, for being here over all the years you've been here. Thank you. Well, it, it's sad, but then it's exciting to see some names here. Gail and Jean and Lori and the certificated had the opportunity to work with many of you over the years and your commitment to the students and always working together with the rest of the teachers. Uh, I look at the classified. Uh, Ms. Copen goes back way before, I mean, have a connection to high school. I went to uh, high school with uh, either her brother-in-law or, you know, and I had her kids in my class and I would tell them stories about high school that their uncle went to school with me. So there was a lot of connection. Julie, up to, it's exactly right. Julie moving around the site, starting at the high school. We had some uh, exciting times when she was uh, principal secretary down at high school. We were still working through the challenges. Of course, maintenance, go ahead at maintenance, and then there's Rachel, and there's just so many that I got to work with over my 18 years, got to see, got to know, and it's just, it's unbelievable the commitment that they have for our students. Paulette, being around for numbers and numbers of years, I saw her going out the parking lot when I came in, and I asked her, I said, why are you leaving so early? And she just kind of smiled, and she said, well, I got things to do, and I said, well, park that car right here, get back to work, but... Just one of those ladies that works hand and foot all the time getting things done. The food service over the pandemic in the summer was just exceptional. And Lucy, uh, you know, I got to rat you out, Lucy. That hair that you had when you were Jerry Watkins, secretary at High Desert. Uh, when I was dean of students at the high school, Jerry was off campus. And she called the Tim, I need your help. You got to come over here to talk to this guy. One of the one of the one of the boys over there was misbehaving. So I go over there. Julie's in that fun school day where she had her hair all tied up, and she was just directly involved in all the student activities. And I walked in, and I thought I was back in the high school meal score. So I go, "Who's this? This is a, Mrs. Lucy." So totally committed to the kids. Tremendous amount of fun. And uh, I, I, you're going to enjoy retirement. Those of you that are going to retire, you're going to move on to another career. I wish you the best, and thank you very, very much for your commitment to the students of the district. Just uh, congratulations, and I hope you really enjoy your retirement. Um, some of you, um, you know who you are. Um, you were Your kids hung out with my kids, and so here we are in the next phase of our lives, and your kids are fabulous, and I hope you're enjoying your kids and your grandkids. Um, 
Yes, Paula, just, just leave, and I'm sure she's going to look forward after the year that she's had doing food services, waking up whenever she wants and not to an early alarm. To, um, if you guys know food services, they wake up very early and do a lot. And I hope, Lucy, you enjoy uh, crafting because I hear that you've become quite a crafter over the last few months. So I hope you enjoy that. But best of luck to all of you, and thank you for all you've done to serve our students and our families and, and represent our community, and we uh, appreciate you from the bottom of our hearts. Let's call to the vote. Well, Mr. Falsgraf is out, so we'll see. Bye. Chad Walter, bye. Tim Jorgens and I. Kelly Jensen and I. That's a 4-0 with Mr. Falsgraf absent this time. All right, next we go to 10B, the 2021-22 school calendar. Can I get a motion to move this in? So. Chad, second? Uh. <laughs> Um, I think he first did. Chad first did. I'll Chad, if you can second. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Fox is seconding. Sure. That's a word. And then, uh, Mr. King, do you have any comments to make? Just real quick, I want to thank the association. You know, I mean, we negotiate the corner with our teachers' association. So I want to thank the teachers' association and our our uh, district team for getting together. It's been like nonstop negotiations, as you know, and the calendar. Got, that can got kind of kicked down the road because there was the priority of taking care of the distance learning, the hybrid model, all these other things uh, to get negotiated. And the calendar, just so everybody understands, both public and the board, the format is pretty stable at this point. So this is the format. We're not moving it back a week. We're not moving it up a week. This, so if you're planning future vacations and so on, it's a very similar format each year. So you see the pre-service days are on August 19th and 20th. Pre-service for new teachers are uh, August 18th. Your PD day is November 1st. And everything else is color-coded. If you have any questions about it, um, Kim Shaw was the chief negotiator, of course, on this. And uh, we're here to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? I have a question. Um, just for the public's knowledge, because there's been a lot of talk about it this week. Uh, the intent is to go back to school normal hours the new school year right or is it going to still be a half day, yeah, day yeah. deal i mean that would definitely be our intent however until the um the guidelines are solidified for the fall um you can't you know say for certain so we're waiting on the state to dictate and the county to dictate what right. i mean we cannot go to school and so at that point we'll still be on the four day model right now that we're at now unless we get that go ahead to gear up to five days. Correct. Okay. And is there, so say we start at four days and then all of a sudden the state opens up. What's the timeline in between the state saying, okay, it's green light, let's go back to school. And is there negotiations that are going to be involved with the teachers or at that point it's kind of like, okay, we're back in it. Yeah, I mean, conceivably, even with the current guidelines, we can change the model. I mean, the model could be a five-day model, but, but that would involve bargaining. So any any veering off of the current hybrid model would involve negotiating. Uh, Thank you for answering my question. Of course. Okay, any other questions or comments? Thank you for all your work on this. Appreciate it. No problem. Okay, so let's call the vote. Call the vote. Call the vote. Paul's got a lie. Fox, aye. Chad Walter with that. And Tim Dorgison is missing at this point. Kelly Jensen, I, that's a 4-0. Okay, we're going to go on to 11A drinking box of fountains retrofit. For the amount of 43, uh, $42,300 to retrofit drinking fountains at Meadowlark High Desert in Acton School. Can I get a motion? Mike Fox, so move. Hey, Mr. King, do you have any comments? The only comment is I thought I spoke about this before with the board, and it, it, it is expensive, but it retrofits the drinking fountains and allows them to use them as water filling stations, similar to what you might see at an airport or any other public place that's hands free. Um, and so uh, there's funds that were allotted through this through uh, COVID relief, and so. Uh, and if the board has any questions, that's in essence what you're, uh, what you're entertaining tonight for consideration. 
So what this is saying is the, the old bubbler system where I just, yeah, yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> right, correct. One more sanitary. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Oh. Let's call for the vote. Well, sure. Yeah, bye. Box, aye. Ted Walker, aye. Ted Jorgensen, aye. Kelly Jensen, aye. That passes by the bureau. Okay, for future agenda items. Um, <clears throat> Do we have anything that we need to talk about for future agenda items? We don't, we don't have to uh, document it, but I would like to invite our treasure. Uh, Mike Fox and his family via Zoom um, at the, the next regular rescheduled board meeting on May 27th to acknowledge him under recognition for reports and, and uh, public input. Um, I think the comments were uh, great, and I put, I think some of our board members were a little bit shocked, and so I think it will kind of give us an opportunity to proper acknowledge Mr. Fox for his uh, years of service and his support. When was this? Next. May 27th. Two weeks. Good. It took me two weeks to think of all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have a comment? Um, I think it's, it's a beautiful a job on the drink. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great idea. So, yes? Yes. Okay. That would be great to run my stuff. Thank you. One of his pictures so his wife can hang it in the house. So, that would be wonderful. All right, calendar. So next week <clears throat> at 6.30, we have a special board meeting closed session to discuss <clears throat> the superintendent search. On the 27th, we have a regular board meeting, and then again on the 9th. And just so everybody knows, the 9th, we're replacing the 10th because of graduation. So that will be on a Wednesday instead of a Thursday. So everybody, please mark the calendar. And then for closed session, we the board does not have anything to report out for closed sessions this evening. No. Yeah. And so from there, we're going to make a motion to adjourn at 9.14 p.m. I have one more question before we start. Sure. And it kind of circles back onto the calendar and whatnot. Starting out with the four days a week schedule like we are now, is that does that mean that online learning is still going to be going as well, or is it going to be one of those situations where everybody's going to be forced to go back to class uh, four days a week? Is what still going to be? Will the online learning portion oh, the online. Will, be, will that stay in place, or is it going to will the year start out where everybody's going to be told to go back to school? My thought is, as close as the fall is, it's um, like too far away to say for certain, um, and I I think staff really needs to have a discussion and particularly with the new superintendent coming in yeah i i really would uh, i don't want to kind of hamstring the new superintendent to have a chance to get to know the district evaluate it make his or her recommendation <laughs> to the board and um so i i know people out there looking for an answer and i think that's your intent it, it is my intent just to try to get the conversation going sooner than later rather than uh come june you know, or slightly before where we're like, okay, now what are we going to do? It's just something I don't want all of us to kind of think about. Yeah. Can I? Uh, can I? Yeah. My last question. If, if the state, because, you know, the governor said we're reopening the team, and things are improving very, very rapidly, they're changing every day. Mm -hmm. If the state says, you're back to normal, there's no restrictions, I would assume we would enter into negotiations with our teachers such that we could enter the beginning of school year under the more traditional model. Is that not what your guys are thinking? No, that it could be fault for that. And part of the language in the MOUs includes um, that that per the guidelines. So there, of there, course, it's always per the guidelines. So, so if the guidelines, you know, basically yeah. say you could return to normal. Um, I just would caution the board in an unagendized item to not discuss it too much. Short. Sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. Um, if you if you're interested, we can agendize it. But uh, again, yeah, I, I would say maybe wait till there's more information. Thank you for getting my question. What I would what I would say to this is, I think that the teachers, and I'm not going to speak for them because we're we're not going to be negotiating. 
But I think what's important is it would be nice to see the teachers get a break to just go, okay, this is this right now. What's effective for us? How are we reaching kids? How do we get to that kid that's, that can't come back yet? And, and I think there's a lot of moving parts in the air. And, and I don't want to just be telling teachers, hey, we do this because somebody wants us to. Did you get that newspaper? I said, I don't want to be telling the teachers, you do what I want you to do. There's actually democracy here. So at the end of the day, the teachers are going to have to think about it's about educational effectiveness is really what it's all about. How are they reaching their kids? How do they think they're most effective at it? And one of the big parts of that is how do I get sidetracked by doing all of this stuff that keeps me away from what I know I can do, what kind of supports do I need? There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of moving parts, and I think we have to just follow and be careful what we say when it's not on the agenda. So with that, we'll go. Make a motion to adjourn at 9.18 p.m. Can I get a motion? Yep, so moved. All right. Thank you. Right. One of you are seconding. Awesome. Jorgensen. All right, let's call for the vote. Balls go. No, I want Mike to stay here forever. <laughs> Put that on the record. No, I will not. Let's yes, try you again. Will. Fox, I, I think we'll outroar. Was that a was that a yeah? Was that a yeah? No, 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 right. no, 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 you can no, stay no. here all night then we're not gonna work. All right, I, Mike. Fox. I, okay. Chad Walker. Kelly Jen and I. That was the four one. We're gonna go anyway and this turn at nine eighteen and Paul's ground can say as late as he would like. Well no, I can outroar. Thank you. Thank you.